New models for opening up research outputs. A tour d'horizon for the innovation track of the European Presidency Conference on Open Science. To make science happen for scientists, society and the economy, the European Commission wants to realize mainstream open access to research outputs. The Commission has no preferred model how to achieve this goal. Instead, it is looking for innovation wherever it may be found. Easy harvesting and reuse of research results would benefit large groups of new users, fellow scientists, teachers, medical staff, citizens, small and medium enterprises, including developing countries. Involving all of these new users in the research process is important to foster equal opportunities and to speed up discovery for society as a whole. To understand the developing models of opening up research outputs, let's go back in time for a second. We have inherited a scholarly communication model founded in subscription-based payments for publications, pay to read. In the last decade, experiences were gained with creating new open access journals and with flipping existing journals to open access. Instead of paying subscription fees, many of these journals charge article processing fees, APCs. The costs are paid in advance and everyone gets access. Open access publishers like Biomed Central and the Public Library of Science have paved the way for the APC mode of funding open access journals. In recent deals with major publishers, APCs for certain journals are paid beforehand as part of the subscription payment. How much is paid beforehand is part of non-disclosure agreements, which stifles competition and innovation in open science. Witnessing a lack of real progress, several international linguistics journals have moved from their traditional publisher to found lingua. The founders aim for fair open access, fair as in transparent, particularly regarding costs, fair as in equal in terms of who can make use of this model, and fair as in not having to sign over the copyright to your research output. The Open Library of Humanities has also recently launched its fair open access platform without author-facing APCs, and key journals in the field of high energy physics were converted to open access at no cost for authors. These initiatives show how consortia of libraries, funding agencies and research centers can make a difference in changing the default model for scholarly communication. Parallel to the APC-based journal model, we see initiatives where publishing roles are distributed to multiple parties. Before the digital age, a piece had to be in a correct and final form before shipping it to its subscribers. Today, there's no technical need to keep editing, dissemination and evaluation of research connected. One of the models which has developed to speed up evaluation is the so-called overlay journal. These journals link to contents from preprint servers like Archive and organize the peer review themselves. Discrete Analysis is one of the recently launched journals that work this way. Peerage of Science is an example where publication and peer review are separated altogether. We also see the development of open peer review models for institutional repositories as well as open science publishing platforms that add the option to invite community comments. Other models for making science happen are rethinking the unit and form of the scholarly publication from scratch. The last decade has seen a lot of startups that are providing the tools to make a researcher's workflow more flexible allowing them to timely share smaller units of research outputs in all phases of the research workflow. In the changing workflow, researchers can now speed up discovery by publishing all of their short ideas, their research data and posters, their code and their single observations as they occur. We see scientists posting reflections, translating the results of their research to younger audience, using citizens' input to solve health problems, and bringing real-life stories from the front lines of discovery. Combining smaller publishing units with new collaborative ways of doing science brings in far more actors in the innovation process, allowing for a fast array of unthought and unsought innovations. Now the crucial thing is not only to build the platforms, but also the reputation. Unless open and innovative practices are rewarded, the models we've just seen are not likely to succeed. We face the challenge to build a scientific culture in which all research outputs are considered as first-class research objects by funders and the like. 
Some parties do not intend to wait until we start to reward open practices. Doubting the morality of the subscription system, SciHub set up a pirate website providing mass and public access to research papers. We see researchers taking matters into their own hands. Signatories of the Pro Initiative for Open Science declare they will make open practices a precondition for peer review. Also, tools like the Open Data button are meant to facilitate a bottom-up transition to make the promises of doing science in the open come true. In short, we have seen three models in the developing landscape of open science. APC-funded journals, distributed publishing roles with the overlay journal as one of the examples, and building innovations around timely sharing smaller units of research outputs. The future asks for dynamic publication formats which are loosely coupled and not held captive. As Commissioner Moeda states, research and innovation must take a long-term perspective and not be trapped by the past. If the Commission wants to make Europe open to innovation, open to science and open to the world, it must dare to choose new models for opening up research outputs and credit participatory and open science.